Good morning, everyone. And here we go. <laughs> the nurse is caring for a client with newly diagnosed infective endocarditis. Which client complaint is the most concerning to the nurse? Number one, the constant pain in my knees and joints make it hard for me to exercise. Number two, the knots in my hands are so painful. Number three, I have fever and it take, makes me feel tired. Number four, my left leg feels numb and cold. So we have four options here and pay attention to the question. It is very important to understand the question when you are, when you are writing your exam. Okay, so pay attention, look for the main words, the clues which are there, recognize those cues and then act on them, right? So here, the major thing which is going to, going to say is it's a, it's a newly diagnosed infective endocarditis, that's one thing, right? And then it says, which client complaint is the most concerning, okay, most concerning. So we are looking for, when you see most concerning, we are looking for something really bad. And this is like, you are trying to figure out if there is going to be a complication. And in NCLEX, there is something called reduction in risk potential, where you are trying to get the um, understand and, and figure out the signs and symptoms before it gets into bad complications. Okay, so you're, you're, you're trying to identify that. Now in this one, we have a question which says it's infective endocarditis and what is the most concerning. Okay, now I, I see some of the answers coming, but I'm going to go through this together and we are going to do this. The number one says, the constant pain in my knees and joints make it hard for me to exercise. So basically there is pains and aches and arthralgia, which is there, that's what they're saying. Second one says, the knots in my hands are so painful. Now there is something, uh, some kind of knots which are there when it comes to infective endocarditis. This is how uh, the valves, heart valves are going to be affected. The endocardium is going to be affected when they get this infection and these are some of the signs and symptoms which you are going to see. Now we discussed this in um, cardiovascular, but I just wanted to review real quick. There are some nodes which are present in, in endocarditis and those are not called Osler's nodes. And it's like right here, right here, you can see those kind of nodes which are there. These are very painful, very painful. Right? It's, it's called Osler's nerves. And, and sometimes people get this kind of hemorrhage, splinter hemorrhage, nail hemorrhage, right? That's also due to um, endocarditis. It could be a sign for that too. And then if the doctor is looking through the ophthalmoscope, he will be able to see this road spot in the retina. Again, some hemorrhagic uh, and things which are very specific to uh, endocarditis. And then there is this general lesions, this kind of uh, red lesions which are there. Uh, these ones are not painful, but this is painful. This is just there, you know, in the, in the palms, usually it happens there too. So these things are part of, or, or signs and symptoms which you are going to see in um, infective endocarditis. This is, this is part of endocarditis, okay? Now, looking at this, maybe you kind of recognize how in our question, there was an option which said, I have nodes, right? It, it said, these nodes in my hands are so painful. Now, the thing is, when it comes to NCLEX exam, when you are trying to figure out what is the answer to a complications, please remember, there could be things which are expected signs and symptoms. And if it is expected signs and symptoms, then that is not going to be something you are going to report immediately because the patient already been diagnosed with endocarditis. Now, if your question already tells you that a diagnosis has been made, then this becomes just a sign and symptom to help with the diagnosis. Yes, we are going to take care of it. Yes, we are going to, um, you know, help the patient with whatever uh, medications they need, but that was part of the diagnosis already. So it's not something where you are looking for us most concerning. 
the most concerning things are something which indicate a complication not an abnormal signs and symptoms of a of a disease but the risk factor for a complication or the risk or the complication is coming you have to act urgently that's what you're looking for okay in that case this arthralgia okay the patient is having arthralgia or uh, pain muscles and aches and everything this is not something which is going to kill the patient right when I mean, they are having the knees joints painful yes it's hard for them to exercise yes it's a discomfort yes it has to be taken care but this is not going to kill them right so it's not going to be my answer now this one also the nodes these are probably the osler's nodes and we know it's going to be there and we say, okay it's, it's going to be there it's part of endocarditis so are we going to uh, call the doctor immediately and say oh doctor this patient has osler's nodes and the doctor is going to be like yeah i saw that i have diagnosed them correctly right i mean is that then most concerning no okay so this is not going to be my answer because this is expected okay this is expected this is also expected right and the third one says i have fever and it makes me feel tired all right again expected because it's itis endocarditis fever is one of the acute symptom they are going to have and i know this patient is going through the acute time because it says newly diagnosed with infective endocarditis so right now they are going through the acute problem they are going to have the fever and the pains and everything now we are going to manage all that but is that something i'm going to call the doctor for or is it going to kill the patient right now probably not now i am worried there is fatigue there is fever have to take care of it because that's going to be increased workload probably i need to give antibiotics for this patient but still it's going to be an expected one okay so the last one then this is my answer because my left leg feels numb and cold i am so worried about that now those of you who wrote for us your answer why do you think for is the answer why are you so worried about it very good it is a blood clot probably it is a thrombus or an emboli i mean we cannot really say always blood clot i want to use the term emboli okay it is probably an emboli which is blocking the femoral area probably it's coming and blocking the femoral artery and it is closing or obstructing the blood flow to that leg and it is one leg which feels numb and cold when there is numb and cold i am already thinking about neurovascular compromise there is blood supply is not there and and there is something wrong going on maybe it's not going to kill the patient right now but they might end up losing the extremity and that emboli can go anywhere and and give more problems now you might be thinking why there is an emboli you are not even i mean this is femoral right we are talking about femoral here but the problem is in the in the heart it's endocarditis how is it connected right so the thing is let me tell you about this picture this is inside the heart these are the valvular area okay and that's where the infection is happening endocardium in heart has three layers there is pericardium there is myocardium then there is endocardium endocardium is the innermost layer where there is valves and, and it's like constant touch with the blood right so when there is infection you always know that there is going to be some changes which is going to happen the inflammatory changes right the tissues are trying to heal themselves and and there is all these small particles which could be detached or just come off you know the things which are part of infection part of inflammatory changes that could just come off and become an emboli now we are talking about inside the chambers of the heart so if something just broke off and gets into this part it is going to be taken up by either pulmonary artery or the aorta 
Now, if that is being picked up by the pulmonary artery, that emboli, that small part or that small residue or whatever, or maybe a blood clot, whatever it co comes out, if that is picked up by the pulmonary artery, where is it going to go? It's going to be taken to the lungs and there it's going to probably block a blood vessel because you know you have the blood vessel going and it, it could be uh, so small that um, it kind of went through the pulmonary artery but when it reaches a smaller diameter arterial it blocks right there and then the lungs are going to be in trouble you get pulmonary embolism right and now let's say it didn't go to the pulmonary it actually went through the aorta it dropped into the aorta area and it went through the aorta. You know, the first thing which happens, the aorta is going to give blood to the heart itself, right? Coronary circulation. So when the aorta gives the blood to the heart, this little emboli can go through it and go to the heart and give a heart attack. That's when MI happens. Or it might go to the cerebral circulation and that's when the stroke happens or it might go into the any, anywhere in our body. Maybe it will go into the intestinal area and it will block the intestinal arteries somewhere there. Then they will have problems with the stomach, with the intestinal area. And it might go into the um, renal area. There could be problem. Now in this one, it didn't go anywhere. It came all the way to the femoral artery and then blocked it right there. So one of my leg, my left leg is not getting enough circulation now. So I am feeling like tingling and numbness and pain and, and claudication and it's hurting. And if the patient is telling you that, you are like, oh, there is something going on. There is a blood clot. We have to do something about it right away. If not, this patient is going to lose that leg, okay? Or, or it could be anything. And if I am already suspecting some kind of venous thing coming into my leg, I mean, there could be more, who knows, right? So we have to let the doctor know. That's why even though the things are happening in the heart and the walls, it is so important to look everywhere for this patient. Anybody with infective endocarditis, any endocarditis problem, if they are complaining about weakness, not just, not just the leg, but maybe one-sided weakness, think about stroke. If they are telling you that sudden onset of shortness of breath, think about PE. If they are telling you that something is numb and cold and they don't feel it, think about some kind of obstruction right there. Okay, so um, this, this could be taken very seriously. And that's why here our answer is going to be number four, because this is what we are so worried about. Not the expected one, not the expected one, not the expected one. Yes, we are worried. We will take care of it, but we know you are going to have it because of your diagnosis. This you need right now, okay? So remember how to get to the right answer because in the question, when you actually get it, it may not be these options. But if you understand how we got to the right answer, you will be okay. You will be able to figure out the right, the right information, okay? Remember in NCLEX, there is normal things you will see those are not your priority. There are abnormal things you see, then you think yourself, is this abnormal thing expected thing? Then it is not your priority. Is this abnormal thing not expected? Then probably that is your priority, okay? I'm wishing you all the very best with your exam. Remember my words, <laughs> all right, guys.